Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a health plan enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you the care and propagation of the beautiful Alocasia bambino. This is probably related to the Alocasia amazonica or the Alocasia poly. The poly is a little bit bigger than this because this is bambino. As in, because as the name bambino suggests, this is actually a dwarf version. So the poly gets one size bigger and then the amazonica can get massively huge leaves. And these guys they actually have really, really interesting uh, narrow shaped leaf that kind of converges into a more narrow shape in the bottom, uh, shown below here, kind of like a key. Very, very interesting. And this is very beautiful uh, leaves. This is a little bit thicker than the Amazonica, which is going to suggest that this is easier to care for than the Amazonica because the Amazonica can get massively huge, but then the leaves are like tissue thin. So these guys are a little bit more durable, I would say. They have very, very similar uh, coloring, veinings, beautiful silver markings that won't show up on camera, by the way. So you must enjoy this in person. Beautiful neon green along the middle of the leaves. And the parties at the back, you guys, the back of these guys are so beautiful. It's like electric lime green that runs through this beautiful maroon burgundy. Really, really interesting. Very, very 80s vibe almost. But yeah, uh, this plant is actually very, very easy to care for, as I mentioned before. Uh, this is considered jewel alocasia because of the size. And really quickly about the care, alocasias, they like brighter light than we like to admit. When I was researching this plant, I read on a lot of websites, uh, mostly in the Western civilization, that say that these are medium to uh, low light plants. They're not. They actually do thrive in a little bit of direct sunlight. And I have I'm not going to recommend that you do it, but I have seen some Alocasia amazonicas grown in full sun. So just to show you how resilient they can be. So do blast them with a little bit more light because they will give you faster growth, they will give you bigger leaves, closer internals, which is what we want in our Alocasias. And a lot of you guys also have struggles with Alocasias, which means that they have leaves that will come out, but then the old ones will fall off. I find that this uh, Alocasia bambino Actually, they have more leaves than the bigger leaf allocations. Maybe because the bigger leaves, they invest in so much energy for the big leaves that they don't have enough energy to support the leaves of, of the lower growth. So they will be a little bit more sparse. However, the trick to growing a bushy alocasia is to have more than one plant in the pot, which I'm going to go through with you later. Sorry, I keep jumping around all over the place. Back to our care. Sunlight, better, uh, more, more than just bright and direct light, where if you can't afford to give in a little bit of direct sunlight, they will appreciate it water it when it's uh, almost completely dry. For alocasias, I noticed that they don't want to be completely dry like your monsteras and philodendrons. So you want to keep them on a damp, humid side, but do not overwater them as well. So don't keep them in uh, sitting in water. The key to doing that is to give them very, very airy potting mix. In my case, I give them my forest floor potting mix. And they really like that because in nature, they actually grow in the forest floors. So they want areas in the potting mix where they can expand their roots and also put out these corms, uh, babies, which we will see later. There's one over here. Oh my God, so much to talk about this time. I'm jumping ahead of myself, sorry. But yeah, they do need some area to spread out in the bottom. So this is one plant that I don't recommend to keep in too tight of a pot, but very airy potting mix will also ensure that they will not be too overwatered. Um, so yeah, for me, I actually water this guy every day. It's not living, it's living in a plastic pot actually. But I do water this, I just noticed how root bound this is. But I water this every day, lightly. Uh, sometimes even twice a day, if it's like super, super hot out with a little bit of direct sunlight, I can water them twice a day. Alocasias, I find that they're actually pretty heavy feeders. They're a bit more heavier feeder than the philodendrons. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you're an alocasia grower, but I do notice that. Maybe because they, in nature, they also grow in the forest floors where they get ample nutrients and they do appreciate that. And they need all that energy to push out uh, the, to, uh, enlarge their bulbs, their corms, <laughs> they're not bulbs. So yeah, do feed your alocasias. And as if you are a uh, avid watcher of this channel, you will know that alocasias come hand in hand with spider mites 100%. So I actually hose down my alocasia with neem oil, a soapy solution, sometimes even with a little bit of chemical mix. And I put a little bit of uh, the slow release chemical pesticide in the potting mix here just to give it a systemic uh, pest control because these are very, very pest prone plants. Do not put too much pesticide though because you may actually burn some of the leaves. So just dilute it, but often. That's sort of my uh, tip with alocasias. So uh, the interesting about alocasias is that they actually put our babies from the uh, below. 
So this plant is actually about nine months old. When I got it, it was already pretty big, don't get me wrong. But with alocasias, I highly recommend for you to check them every few, uh, I would say every six to nine months or so, because they put out so many babies from underneath and there's all these corms uh, in the potting mix that they put out. And sometimes the corms, which is the little bulbs, they're facing the wrong direction. So if you actually separate it from the mother plant and you plant it in a separate pot, facing the right way up, they will form baby leaves really fast. And the growth pattern for alocasias is they will grow like uh, new leaves, uh, what do you call this? Sh a shingling kind of manner. So they will not give you a bushy plant unless you cut it up. Of course, if you cut it and there's a lot of nodes below, a few branches may emerge. It will give you a, a much bushier pot. Or if you wait for these little babies here to kind of grow up and become their own shingling plants, you will have a massive pot full of alocasias. And this applies to all alocasia species. So if you're wondering, oh, why is my alocasia so sad? Because it's only like a few leaves. Well, I'm going to show you later. Just give it a hard prune, propagate them, plant them in the same pot. You'll have many, many leaves coming uh, in one pot, basically. Here's a close up of the babies. So yeah, let me slowly take them out if I can first, because they are very, very delicate at this point. They do usually break away very easily from the parent plant. But you don't want them to break off at the patio. Ah, this came right off. Look at that. Hello, baby Bambino. It's not going to focus, is it? Hang on. All right, one more time. Hello, baby Bambino. Oh my God, focus, focus. <laughs> you get the point. It's not going to focus that well, but yeah. Uh, let me take off the other one. Just... Be very careful. Yeah, this came right off. How cute is that? Oh my god, it's not gonna focus. I don't know why, maybe it's too little, too teeny tiny for the camera to focus on. But let me show you what the inside looks like. So there's a little bit of a corm action going on here, a little bulb with a little bit of roots. So yeah, I'm gonna plant these in their own pots and then they can grow into their own little babies. And then let's dig in to see if we can find more of these babies. Ah, there, we have a contender. Do you see this? That's actually a corm. So, oh, that came right off. So I'm going to plant this like this way up. As you can see, there's a sharp point uh, on the top. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and then the roots are kind of below that. So do this often with your alocasias. And I find that my most, oh my god, there's so many of them in there. Look at that. If you leave them in there, they're just going to store up food. They're just going to grow into their own thing. So this is why alocasias are actually very easy to propagate. And, um, oh yeah, this came right off. See, this was actually grown inverted in this potting mix, but in actuality, I think it wants to come up here because that's where you see the new growth point is. This is why it didn't sprout inside. So we just have them plant, planted side up. And by the way, this is not the only way to propagate alocasia. I hope I can show you more tricks later uh, in this video. And of course, after we all become experts at alocasia propagation, their prices are gonna fall. <laughs> because they're so easy, you guys, seriously, they're one of the easier plants. They're the most misunderstood in terms of care, but also in terms of, let's see another one here, in terms of propagation. And I don't really see that many uh, alocasia propagation videos out there. There's look at so many of these. So check them often. Um, of course, not too often because I, each time you unpot them. Oh, and this is from the same media from the nursery. I did not even unpot this. Uh, disclaimer, I got this from Sangar Kamoning and I always get plants from there that are, I mean, every time I get plants from there, they have been very healthy and they grow up, re grow really fast. So it's a very, very recommended seller, very reputable. Not sponsored, of course. See more corms here. I may need a sifter to go through. <laughs> so anyways, back to my point with potting mix. If the plant looks healthy, it's doing well, and you bought it, brought it back from a nursery, don't repot it immediately, even though you may have a better solution or a potting mix that you're more comfortable with, because plants actually get really stressed out when you repot them. So in this case, they're probably very, very stressed out. But yeah, but this is uh, necessary today. What we're doing now is for the, for the, for the common good of the plant. More of them here, just kind of pluck them off gently. Can, uh, another alocasia that readily puts out uh, corms like this is your alocasia cupria. They are so very naughty, they put out so many babies. I think I got everyone. 
I'm actually gonna wash this off because I wanted to show you what the anatomy looks like inside. Even though I, sh I normally I would just pot it right away, but I'm gonna wash it just to show you what it looks like inside. So I counted 16 of these baby corms right here. I'm actually gonna move here uh, so it's eight per row. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant these, uh, well, half of them in general purpose potting mix because I think it's also loose and airy enough for them and half of them in uh, forest floor potting mix. It's very easy, you just wanna lay them down, uh, the right side up, of course. Make sure that this is facing up the, the, the growth point here. And if you're not sure which way up it is, just lay it sideways so you have a 50-50 chance. Because sometimes they are not as obvious. It's actually a lot easier to work with the general purpose potting mix in this case. All right, there you go. And one of the reasons why I'm using trying both media is because a lot of you guys don't have access to this forest floor potting mix. So you guys can look at the general purpose potting mix, which is coconut, peat, perlite, uh, burn rice hull, which can be substituted with horticultural charcoal and worm casting, so there's some nutrients in there. So you guys can uh, figure out uh, the, the kind of potting mix you want in your living space because they are actually quite resilient. They can take many types of potting mix. Uh, and they can also do aerate potting mix, by the way. That's really good for them. But I find that aerate potting mix, the, the chunks of coconut chip and uh, charcoal, uh, the chunky bits basically, will impede the corms from producing. They're not as easily, readily, uh, spread out in in the soil. So in the past, I'm, I apologize, in the past I did mention that for alocasias you should use uh, aerate potting mix, but I, f I found out through experience that you know, it's they're, they're better off with forest floor potting mix or general. And one more thing that I wanted to add actually for these uh, guys that are in uh, the just the corms, I want to add a little bit of fungicide, just a sprinkler on top. You're technically supposed to mix this with water and then spray them on the plants. But uh, I just sprinkle on top and whenever I water this, it's just gonna seep into the potting mix uh, into the soil. Because I find that the corn sometimes can attract fungus and that's really deadly for them. Into the fun portion. <laughs> this is the roots, very, very healthy roots. As you can see, it was actually pretty wet and then doused with water and somehow they can, they haven't rotted yet. Uh, so they can take a little bit of watering, but then they do need that airy potting mix and they do need that bright, bright indirect light with a little bit of direct sunlight. And uh, of course I'm, leave, I'm growing them outdoors, so they're getting dried out a little bit faster. So if you're growing them indoors, please do adjust your care accordingly. But just like any philodendron, as you can see here, these are actually nodes, their nodes are actually very, very close to each other. So each line here represents a leaf that was there and each leaf actually consists of they, an aerial root, a, a leaf of course, and some of the leaves have fallen off from here. And it also includes a growing eye. So as you can see here, this can actually potentially give me so many plants. And this is why when you guys living abroad are ordering alocasias, it's much better to order them without the leaves because the leaves are gonna die in transit anyways. And then you're gonna be panicked, you're gonna try to revive them, and the leaves are gonna take so much energy from uh, the tuber, the main, uh, I don't know what you call this, rhizome? the main rhizome that it's just going to detriment the plant. So it's better to buy them as uh, either rooted uh, tubers or just as uh, bare, what do you call this? Just uh, bare tubers basically. So yeah, I need to make sure that the top portion here stays alive. So I want to have a sizable, uh, let me take my scissors out. I need to have a sizable amount of roots that can support this many leaves. And I may actually lose some of the leaves if I was smart or if I, uh, was wise, what I would do is I would actually cut a few of the leaves, lower leaves off because this will, uh, I mean, I mean, let me do the cut first, hang on, before I, I show you what I'm talking about. Because their nose are so close together, I'm just gonna make a random cut. I can't really, I'm gonna lose a few of the nose anyways. All right, so as you can see here, all that root is gone. It now only has this uh, few roots. It's not gonna support this many leaves. So what's happening is that the plant now it's going to have to struggle to put out new roots while it's trying to put out this new shoot over here, while it's trying to retain all of the leaves here. So, you know, the, the wise thing to do actually uh, is, again, uh, I'm gonna do it right here. It's just to take off a few of the leaves. I know it's very drastic, but it must be done to ensure the survival. And usually you start taking off the older leaves where possible. 
I'm gonna play uh, Leaf Idol here. <laughs> Eliminating them one by one. I know it's painful, you guys. I know it's, the sound is painful, but it must be done. So this is fine. And all these uh, notes from before, they can yeah, produce new vines as well. So another thing about them is that, as I mentioned, when they reach a particular age, they can actually put out new uh, vines from below, and that's how you can get a, a potentially bushy alocasia. Or if you give them a hard prune from the top, you can also encourage the bottom uh, leaves to activate, especially if you take the apical bud off. This is the apical dominance here, the apical bud. If you nip it off, the plant will have to branch out somewhere from below, and that's how you can get a bushier alocasia because they have the potential to put out so many vines here. All right, so I've got some forest floor potting mix here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix it with the potting mix that it was in before because it's a pretty good mix anyway. And it's probably used to that potting mix. And I'm just gonna plant this directly back into the pot that it came in. Technically speaking, I would probably be more comfortable with, uh, with terracotta pots. But yeah, this is what I have in front of me, so I'm gonna use it. Let me come around. All right, and just uh, pot it up. And you don't want to pot it in too deep. And uh, what I normally do these days is actually pot it up like kind of halfway, halfway through. And then uh, you are less likely to overwater it when you have less soil in here. Oh, this is just flopping around. <laughs> and then what was I gonna say? And then when the, the plant actually starts growing higher and higher, leaving a bare stem, you can actually add more potting mix later uh, to the plant. So this is my, my sort of my trick with all of my plants' propagations. This is where the party really begins. This is where it gets really interesting. Let me see if I can find any growing eye from here. And a lot of the corms, by the way, they do come from here. So they put out these extended corms out of these. But there's, sometimes it's a growing eye, but in this case, I don't see one. So I'm just gonna randomly cut it off. I'm gonna, uh, I usually do it with knife, but I, <laughs> it's in the kitchen, I'm too lazy to get it. So you can cut it like single notes, like this. Make sure you have it the right side up. And then hang on, I'm gonna give it a little bit of, uh, char uh, this is activated charcoal, just to get, uh, prevent infection from the fresh wound. You can also use cinnamon powder. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Hang on, this is not for I'm just going to uh, lay these in there. And if you have them shipped without any roots, that's fine. You just, you just basically have this main tuber. You can just cut into pieces and lay them kind of sideways. And some of the growing eyes will emerge. Of course, you may lose some, but um, there's so many notes in there. Actually, I'm going to put two in here because... I'm running out of pots. I'm gonna take a random section here. This is actually dangerously close. I only see like two notes here. Very dangerously close, but oh well. Normally I would uh, be a little bit more conservative and leave like three to four notes in there. So do stick around so you know the, uh, the results. I'm going to do actually one more in this pot. Okay, this time I'm going to go easier. There. So there's actually three, three or four notes in here. Much better this time. Oh, my hands are so dirty. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Okay, three. It's a crowd indeed. This is getting very packed inside. Uh, da, 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 da. And you want to kind of have the top of this cutting a little bit exposed to the air. You don't want to bury it. You don't have to, in fact. And don't compact this potting mix, it just needs humidity, it doesn't want to be sitting in water. Alright, I don't know if you can see, but there's three heads peeking out of this. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna uh, keep an eye out for this, keep it slightly damp, but not soggy wet. So yeah, it can actually dry out a little bit more than your parent plant. And then uh, one more pot, I was gonna do general, but you know what, since we have so many potting mix here to work with, I'm just gonna use this. I'm gonna just cut it up into more pieces. This one I may actually only do two cuttings. Just like that. Oh, and you, if you are struggling with these guys, of course my, my suggestion, as with most of my 
advice is to start over because some of the plants, if you cut them and you grow them from these uh, propagations, they are much more adapted to your space, to your potting mix. So they will do so much better after you propagate them. This one doesn't have as much root, so I'm just gonna keep it a little bit sh shallow. I'm gonna only gonna put half the uh, potting mix. So there you go. So we have two grown in uh, from cut up from the main corm. We've got some of the baby corms here. We've got two baby plants. And we've got one uh, mama plant here. So I'll give you guys an update on these. Hopefully they all survive, and I'll see you guys in a few months. Bye. Welcome to an eight weeks update. So these are all the little baby please. Love watching these day by day. They just started sprouting out. This one's becoming a little bit feisty here. So what I'm gonna do, look at all these new ones that are coming out. I don't know if you can see very well here, but there are new ones coming from the ground. So this is going to be overcrowded very quickly. So I should, uh, I don't know, in a week or two, uh, separate them in their uh, individual pots and I counted one two three four five pots here I believe there should be more uh, I don't know if this is it or not. I don't label my plants this is so terrible by the way uh, but yeah I'm very happy with this result I will give you guys an update because I do want to show you guys a few more weeks to see how fast they grow into bigger leaves but uh, I'm gonna quickly show you the parent plant let me see where is it where are you there <laughs> okay so this is the parent plant. It did not bat an eye. It was just growing. It just kept growing and didn't show me any yellowing leaves, which is going to show to me that this plant is very resilient. It's got a strong will to leave. It's very adaptable. So yeah, the parent plant is doing really well. This is the new leaf. So yeah, this is a very, very easy alocasia so far. So it's two more weeks since the last update and this is the final update. Every pot basically made it. This one only have one shoot, but we're gonna see how the others are doing. There's some more things in there, but let's inspect the roots real quick, starting with this easiest one. This one I believe was probably in my general purpose potting mix. I have a feeling they do much better in the forest floor potting mix. Because the ones in general, well this one's doing well too. This is also in general, it's got a lot of babies but this one's only got one nice look at that so i'm going to be potting all of these individually i don't think i'm going to do this in my general mix anymore because i'm going to be having these up for sale so they're going to be in the, the best potting mix ever which is going to be my forest floor potting mix i have a video on my potting mix and this is one of them i'm going to link that video in up above so you know what exactly it's made out of and why we chose the certain ingredients. Uh, in the beginning, I'm not going to pot it up like super high. I'm just gonna, uh, you can see, there's actually more room to add more soil later. So I'm gonna let this grow up a little bit more. And as it grow upwards, the old leaf is gonna die. The new leaf is gonna keep pushing upwards. I'm gonna have like a stem here. That's what I'm gonna bury it with a little bit more potting mix later, but not now. And the reason why I'm keeping all of these in a tight pot in case you haven't seen that video, please do watch that because I'm going to link that up above. Uh, to summarize it, I, I want to use less fertilizer, I want to use less pesticide, and I don't want to overwater it. This is why I use smaller, uh, I use less amount of potting mix where possible. And this one, there's two living in here. Do I, let me see, do I see any more corn? I see one here, but I don't think something's, yeah, I don't know if something's going to happen. I see a little bit of root action here. I don't think it's something's gonna happen unless I maybe may have had it upside down. Yeah, I'm gonna try to plant it this way up this time, but yeah. And I don't want to compact the potting mix. I want to keep this lightly moist. So I want to water this every day lightly. I want to give this more light than most people would think alocasias need because alocasias do need a lot of light, a little bit of direct sunlight. They really thrive. I have, again, I've seen some of the, the alocasia Amazonica grown in full sun, just so you know. I uh, don't recommend for you guys to do that, but I've seen that happen and they are thriving. So they really love to be in a moist potting mix that is airy, that is never compacted, but they also like to be in very bright light. That's another one. Let me check a few more roots. I'm not gonna pot all of these up for you because it'll take too long. Look at this baby, oh my gosh, that's a baby. Ah. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, and this one's trying to sprout. So some of them are a little bit slower to, to grow than others. Yeah, but let me count how many plants I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I have thirteen uh, little plantlets now. But I want to check this one out actually because um, I suspect something's happening with the with the corn. So this is this is ready. This is done. But this is not sprouting yet. What's up with that? Um, yeah, this one hasn't really given me anything. Maybe there's no nodes in here. Um, or maybe it just needs more time. I don't know. I don't see a growing eye though. So I'm just going to leave it in there uh, for, for more time, for longer. But yeah, I don't see anything else here. So I'm trying to dig, <laughs> dig into it. Let me see this last one here. Yeah, I think this is the only one here. I don't see any other things. I see this one, sorry. This one's not rooted, but it doesn't have any growing eye either. So not all of them took. So I had I had basically three, I believe, that um, did not give me anything so far. Um, but this is what it should look like when it get, when it grows, you know, for you. And this as well. Look at that. Ah, love all these root This came from the, out of this little knob here. I don't know if you can see well. So it grew sideways out of there. There. Nice, very nice roots, very healthy plants. Easy to propagate, easy to grow, love it. And I love their red underside, it gets more dramatic over time. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna end this video here. I'm gonna finish up this mess, I'm gonna pot them up. That 13 plants plus a mother plant is pretty good, I would say. And these are pretty fast growers. Although I do think that this may take a while to get to the size of the adults, I would say maybe nine months to a year. But they look nice like this. You no, know, it's nice to have them kind of grow up in your space. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagation, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye.